Backface calling is something that I made a video on in the past with regards to Game Maker, but those videos were a little bit more focused on the visual aspects of backface calling and just mechanically what it means and uh, less talking about optimization. Let's do that today. Hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and let's talk about making your 3D games and Game Maker run fast. Backface calling is one of the more perhaps well-known strategies that you can use to make your video games in, in 3D run faster. And I kind of hate to say it, but backface calling usually doesn't result in the dramatic performance improvement that some people on the internet would lead you to believe that it does. But regardless, it is a thing that you can do and it is um, something that can have an effect. So let's talk about it. Backface calling. If you haven't seen the videos that I made on calling in the past, I will have links to that on screen just to make sure that everybody knows what it is. I currently, in this project that I that I have been working out of in this 3D optimization series, I um I do not have it turned on. It's often something that people would turn on by default when they um when they just start a 3D project and when they're working on 3D. I have not set that up in this project so far, so I guess we'll do that today. So I've been saying previously in the series that um. We're drawing a couple thousand trees, we're drawing 2,500 trees, and each of those trees is composed of 12 vertices, each, e each of those trees, I'm sorry, is composed of 12 triangles, and each of those triangles is composed of three vertices. In total, in this little demo scene, we're drawing 30,000 triangles. That is somewhat misleading at best. There is a little bit more to that number than you might think. So, given that we do not have backface calling turned on, uh, the computer will automatically try to draw both sides of the triangle. And that means that if you have a if you have a single triangle and you look at that triangle, you will be able to see it both from from the front, uh, from the front front facing direction as well as from the back facing direction. Whereas if you had back face culling turned on, you would only be able to see that triangle from the back facing direction. Hence the name back face culling. Hey. Very often, although perhaps not universally, there are reasons that you might want otherwise. You probably want back face culling enabled for visual purposes so that your game looks the way you want it to. If you want to, if you want both sides of a triangle to be visible, you probably want to have two triangles, one on the front facing side and one on the back facing side. And this allows you to have more artistic control over what that triangle looks like. Whereas if you just had back face culling turned off and you have both sides of the triangle rendering, both sides of the, tri of the triangle will look exactly the same. And this can, for example, when it comes to lighting, this can have the effect of making it look like light is shining through a solid uh, surface rather than being blocked on the side of the surface that is facing away from the light. I do not really have a demonstration for that in this project, but I will have a screenshot on screen so that you can see what I mean. But there is also a performance uh, aspect to this, because why would you want the computer to spend time filling a triangle that you cannot see? Uh, for example, if you have a sphere, which is a pretty basic shape, the only sides of the triangles composing that sphere that you can see are the triangles that are facing outwards, the triangles on the outside of the sphere, and why would you want the computer to spend time trying to fill the triangles that are on the inside of the sphere that you will never be able to see anyway, unless you somehow manage to clip the camera through it. So, and I'll probably talk about this later in this in this 3D optimization series when I talk about shader stuff and shader optimizations. Uh, this specifically means that backface calling affects the number of fragments that the fragment shader has to draw, and not the number of vertices that the vertex shader has to process. The number of vertices that the vertex shader has to process is going to be the same either way. It's just that the uh, the fragment shader has to fill more more pixels on the screen, potentially. Hey. And let's uh, let's start. Finally, I've done a lot of talking at the beginning of this video and just staring at the screen and not writing any code. Uh, let's start by turning on backface calling in this project. So, uh, in Game Maker Studio two, you have two options for this. You have GPU set call mode, uh, call counterclockwise, and call clockwise. Uh, this depends on the winding direction of your triangles. Most of the time, I think you will want the calling direction to be counterclockwise. If you have triangles, if you have the vertices in your triangles defined in reverse order, you may want uh, clockwise instead. At the end of the 3D drawing, GPU set call mode, uh, call no calling, and that's going to turn backface calling off so that when the user interface is drawn, uh, backface calling is not is not taken into account. Generally, not something you want. So let me run the game now. And I've already forgotten what the uh, what the what the FPS that we were seeing was um, at the beginning. I want to say it was about 1,200. And let's see. Let me uh, let me comment this out first so that we can get a a decent uh, before and after. 
measure because I do not remember what the exact number was earlier. Okay, so right now it looks like our FPS reel is high 900s, maybe if I let it run and maybe if I let it even out. I'll hit the space bar to let the... to reset the, the average. Uh, it's about a thousand FPS reel right now. Uh, this number is... this number will vary. But anyway, about a thousand FPS reel a little more is what we're seeing right now. And if I were to turn this on... And if I were to run the game again... Hey! And if I were to wait for Game Maker to, to properly shut down, thank you. Uh, we are going to see that we may have a slight change in uh, in the FPS reel, and, and, and I'm going to try to put about the same number of uh, of trees in the screen every time because the uh, the, fr the frame rate the fill rate um, does have a minor effect the number of triangles the number of pixels that the fragment shader tries to fill uh, on the subject of what I just said. Um, if I were to reset this again, it looks like we are getting high one thousands, maybe uh, pushing eleven hundred frames per second reel. So we can see the backface culling had a small effect on performance, but it's really it's really um, verging on statistical noise. It doesn't really have that great of an effect on um, on performance as you might be led to believe. So it's definitely worth considering, and I see the value is actually creeping up slightly as I let the game run. So that's cool. Um, it's definitely worth considering, and do, having your computer do less work is almost always going to be worth it. Boy, that number is really starting to creep up now. But it's worth bearing in mind that this is probably not the silver bullet when it comes to performance that the TIG Source forum post from like 2007 might have led you to believe. Certainly, and that brings me to my next my next point on this, on weaker hardware, having to only have to fill half as many uh, pixels certainly can help, perhaps somewhat more than it would on something like my computer with a, with a dedicated graphics card, so... As I always like to do, let me switch this over to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, let me wake up the Raspberry Pi. Let me start the screen capture on the Raspberry Pi. And let me run the game on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, first, before I do that, I'm going to comment this out just so that we can see a little bit of before and after testing. Um, if I recall, we were seeing about 120 FPS real and about 25-ish frames per second observed um, in this project the way it stands right now. Uh, but let me just, uh, let me just run it again, just to double check. Okay, that's more or less what it is. Uh, 23, 24 FPS observed and about 110, about 120 FPS real is being, uh, reported. And that is with backface calling off, so if I were to turn this off, and if I were to uncomment the line where I turned backface calling on, uh, we should be seeing we should be seeing somewhat more of a performance boost uh, from this. I don't think it'll be very dramatic. I have not tested this before. I sat down to record this video, so this will be news to me as well. But as of, as based on my understanding of what's going on here, uh, we should be seeing a small performance boost, probably a little bit more significant than we saw on my on my desktop computer. But it's uh, it's unlikely to be to be anything dramatic. We're unlikely to be seeing the game running at 60 FPS on the Pi. Okay, so uh, indeed, the FPS reel is still about 120 or so, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, and the frames per second that we're actually observing on the Raspberry Pi has jumped up from um, 20 low 20s to almost double that. We're sitting at about 40 right now. So definitely an improvement, uh, definitely not a silver bullet, but it's definitely um, worth considering. And I, I guess I would mention, I suspect the reason that you tend to see backface calling mentioned a lot in older writings on the internet about optimizing 3D games, just not with regards to Game Maker, but just in general, is because in the days of old when uh, GPUs were less strong than your, your 1060s and your 2070s or whatever, cutting out, cutting out pixels that you had to fill, or, or I should say cutting out pixels that you don't have to fill, was much more meaningful back in the early 2000s, the mid 2000s than it is today. I do not have a graphics card from like the early 2000s that I can test this on, but the Raspberry Pi is could be considered comparable, and that is indeed what we're seeing. Hey. So that is just a that is just a theory based on based on what I know about how backface culling works and what I have observed. And you can do with that information whatever you want when you uh, when you make your games. Uh, I will also add that normally most of the uh, most of the optimization tricks that I've shown in video so far have um have had different effects when you're trying to draw one tree versus when you're trying to draw this combined vertex buffer compared to when you're trying to draw every um, vertex buffer individually. And backface culling will not really have that much of an effect. 
uh, whether you're trying to draw a single large vertex buffer or thousands of small ones. If I were to run this now, uh, we would be seeing more or less the same numbers as before, because right now, the way we're drawing things, uh, the issue isn't so much the bandwidth of communicating with the GPU constantly as it is just the number of pixels that the GPU has to fill at the end of the day. So backface calling is a, uh, is a bit of an optimization that affects uh, vertex buffers of all sizes more or less equally. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. If you want the code for this and the code to the other optimization demos, I will have a link to a GitHub repository where all of those can be found in the video description. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week, uh, one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game. I should be coming up on doing optimization in those in that game soon as well, hopefully. That's going to be fun. That's going to be putting a lot of these a lot of these isolated demos into a uh, into practice for a real world situation. I look forward to that. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Let me know in the comments if uh, if any of these optimization strategies have uh, helped boost performance of your own games that you're making. I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.